I'm here for the shareholders' meeting. Mr. Ripperger's postponed the meeting until Mr. Corley's murderers are apprehended. All the shareholders were notified. Yeah. Well, I haven't checked my voicemail lately, Mac. Souvenirs here. We got your hats. We got your pennants. We got it all right here. Official Corley Motors merchandise. Drive your own derby car by remote control. Our bunnies come with batteries included. Lovable, lovable little bunnies. The officially licensed bunny of the Corley Motors Smashatorium. We got your t-shirts here. All sizes and colors. Fill our handy beverage hats with your drink of choice. That's what having a regular job will do to you. You'll be keeping cold and looking bold. Uh, you, big fella, come give our derby car a spin. Excuse me, but are those shirts, uh, are they all cotton? Well, uh, let's just see here. One hundred percent cotton. Oh, um, that's too bad. I'm allergic to cotton. Souvenirs to remind you of your special Smashatorium adventure. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. Looks like it's getting weak. Oh, great! You killed the battery. Buy your kids a bunny so they'll shut up on the long drive home. Don't be a cheap jerk. Buy something. side of this field. I've heard a lot about the vultures. And I guess it's all true. Hmm. No. If we don't got it, then it stinks. <laughs> that should put some life into it. Sure, sure. Pat the bunny. You know you want to. You just can't get this stuff anywhere else, folks. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. 
and it's cheap too. I'm practically giving this loot away. What's a couple of bucks in exchange for a timeless memento? Okay, that's far enough, bud. Let's bring her back now. Demo's over. Are you listening to me? Hey, don't go in there. Now look what you did. The entrance is all the way through the factory. Hang on, little buddy. Daddy's coming. Now it's just me and the bunnies. Field's been replanted. Tidy little vultures. Don't think so. surprises. Thank you. 
That's the guy I was telling you about, Susie. You sure? Yeah. That's the guy who killed my father. All right, vultures! Rack him up! Let's rip him quick. Listen, Mo. You're making a big mistake. Oh, Ben, you're right. We shouldn't do this quickly. We should draw this out, don't you think, Susie? Hey, I got all night. You heard her, kids. Let's draw this out. <clears throat> Your father. Don't you dare talk about my father, you heartless bastard. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll call you names. <laughs> like what? Diaper Dynamo. How... would you hear that name? Your father. He told me just before he died. You bludgeoned my father and then talked about old times? I didn't kill him. Rip Burger did. A photographer took pictures, but her camera was stolen by the same thug that came after you. I... I still have that role. Well, develop it, would you? While I still fit in my clothes? Okay, you stay here. Hey. Sorry. Yeah, well, don't sweat it. I'm gonna get Rip Burger even if I die trying. No. We have to expose Rip Burger at the shareholders' meeting. That way, we take him down, we save my gang, and your father gets his dying wish. You take over Corley Motors. Rip Burger canceled the shareholders' meeting. He made a statement to the press that there'd be no meeting until the murderers were brought to justice. So, no shareholders' meeting until we're both dead? Hmm. That could be arranged. Okay, so here we go. Faking Ben and Maureen's death. Act one, scene one. Adrian Ripburger, in a desperate attempt to lure our Maureen out of hiding, has developed the following lame-ass scheme. First prize at tonight's smash-up derby is a vintage hardtail that Mo restored with her dad. Rip hopes Mo will try to nab said bike on account of her sentimental attachment to it. So Ben and Mo play along, put on disguises, and enter the demolition derby, which ends tragically when their cars explode and both are presumed dead. Uh, question. Please save your questions until the end. Now, the explosives in Mo's car can only be triggered by a head-on collision with Ben's car. This ejector seat projects Mo clear of the explosion, and she parachutes to safety. Don't you think someone will notice her rejecting out of her car? No. They'll all be watching you running around on fire. Yeah, that's another question I have. When your car explodes, you climb from it in flames and run around the stadium distracting the audience. In your cute little asbestos suit, of course. <laughs> that's some plan. All right, then. Let's go blow you little darlings up. All right, folks. Hang on to your chili dogs, cause it's time to start. The Corley Motors Smashatorium Amateur Driver Ultimate Destruction Maximum Carnage Marathon. Let's meet our crash cage gladiators. That mysterious looking hooded figure wouldn't give us his real name. He prefers to be known as the Unknown Avenger. And that's just fine with us, isn't it, folks? <laughs> now I'm just embarrassed for them. Who do they think they're fooling with those ludicrous disguises? And next to him is another masked newcomer. Please give a big smashatorium salute to the Princess of Pile Up, Doreen Smorley! Alright, boys. Sick of me. And finally, we have a last minute addition lineup tonight, a deadly looking team known as the Boom Boom Brothers. Try and get away now. Alright now, are you ready to see some reckless driving? Are you ready to see some unnecessarily violent destruction? Then let's 
let the Demolition Derby begin! Hang on, Mo. Here I come. That car stalled when I bounced off the roof. Looks like these babies have a glass jaw. and nail me. out for the boom boom br
Finally. Now, squish that firefly while he's hot. <laughs> Look at him run. Finally got him, Bolas. That means Ripburger has to make us vice presidents now, like he promised, and give us 10,000 shares of stock each. Hmm, funny smell. What's that, the temperature light? Well, on the bright side, I just made 20,000 shares of stock. Time to start the shareholders meeting. Where's the hardtail? All over the floor, Mr. Avenger. What? What happened to your deep sentimental attachment to your father's vintage bike? Ben, it's just a bike. I can put a bet together in about a half an hour. That's assuming, of course, I can find that key. What key are you talking about? Key to my dad's safe. I remember he hid it somewhere on this bike. But I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything that even looks like a key. What's in the safe that's so important? My dad's will. I'm counting on him to tell the truth about me, finally. Why did he keep you a secret all these years? He didn't want people to find out about my mom. What's so bad about Mrs. Corley? She wasn't my mom. Huh. But how are we going to get in the factory? In the back of the factory, there's a secret entrance that leads straight into Dad's office. He used to sneak me in so I could help him with his bike designs. When he got too old to do all the work himself? Nah, this is back when I was six. Hmm. How do I find the secret passage? Well, it's tricky. You have to wait for all the utility meters to turn black. Then you kick the wall in just the right spot and you're in. How do I find the right spot to kick? Dad just knew exactly where to kick it. But I remember that there was this big crack in the wall. And if I lined up that crack with my eye level and kick the wall right in front of me, this weird portal would open up. Hmm. How was your flight? Well, there were some explosions during takeoff and I landed in a minefield. But other than that, it was fine. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. Uh-huh. Great. Now help me find that key. Remember that time you tried to kill me? Yeah, we really taught you a lesson. <laughs> Get it? What are we in, anyway? It's a C-330 Big Mouth Industrial Cargo Jumbo Transport we fixed up. We want to get it rolling so we can take it to biker rallies. You're going to try to fly this thing? Rolling, Ben. Rolling. This baby's flying days are over, just like mine. What if I can't find that spot? Just line up your eyes with the crack, wait for the meters to go black, and kick. That kicking part is pretty vague. Look, I was only six. Give me a break. I'll see what I can do. Right. 
I'm not putting my lips on that. Hmm. 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 Here, take the photos. I don't want them. Show them to someone important if you get a chance. Just like the cell doors in solitary. Hey, open up. Sorry, the meeting's already started. I know. Let me in. Mr. Ripperger's giving his keynote address. No interruptions. But I'm a shareholder. Yeah, right. Jerk. Stadium burn. That's gonna take a bite out of the pension fund. I'm not putting my lips on that. Some sort of card. A tape. I sure hope that's Corley's will. Locked. These need more exposure than that. was not only an inspirational leader, but also a great personal friend. His loss affects us all deeply. Malcolm and I spoke often of the future. We talked of a day when Corley Motors would move beyond its humble beginnings into a new vehicular age. And although his tragic death took him from us sooner than anyone expected. Malcolm Corley's dream remains. And I shall carry out that dream in his memory. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the future of Corley Motors. The Corley Minivan. <laughs> Corley was right. I never dreamed it would actually come to minivans, though. Hey. 
What you see before you right now is my vision for Oh, perfect. This is a disaster. You're telling me. We're gonna have some major downtime here. Why don't you tell a joke or something? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know any jokes. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of an amusing anecdote. <laughs> About a... Uh, uh, I... Well, I'm out of ideas. I can see all over the company from here. This is where you put the cards for the big screen video projector. Now, this next slide shows our new, more aggressive corporate strategy. Hello there! If you're hearing this, I must have croaked. Well, people gotta move on, you know, and make room for other people. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. I've made room for someone else to take my place at Corley Motors. And it ain't that embezzling crook, Adrian Ripper. Rip, you don't belong at the head of my company. You belong in jail. Uh... I let that man talk me into far too many things. Like keeping my daughter a secret. He was wrong. I was wrong. I should have stood by her. I hope, Maureen, that you forgive me and that you take over Corley Motors and run it however you see fit. All right, that's enough. How do I turn this damn thing off? I... Uh, I'm sorry you had to hear that tape from... one of Malcolm's psychiatric sessions. And near the end, he, he suffered many paranoid delusions. He was haunted by powerful forces of his own creation. And here's one of them. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maureen Corley, and do I have a heck of a story for you. By the time I'm done, you'll see why this man should be in jail. Hey! Where'd he hobble off to? Uh-oh. There he goes. And then he sent his goons after me. Run, Rip Burger. When it's time to find you, we'll just follow the shiny trail. Yes, of course we'll have daycare facilities. Any other questions? Oh, speak of the devil. Come over here, Ben. Then, I found you where we were meant to be all along. So, after we pick up your bike, we'll go get my gang out of jail. And then find out why my gang never showed up to help us. And then you go business suit shopping. Don't remind me. Don't complain. You're going to be rich. At this point, I'd settle for just a little peace and quiet.
Bunny won't do much there. No one sneaks up on me from behind. You're going to kill all of us. Shh, Ben. Don't move. How do you stop this thing? From the cockpit. Hmm. Careful, Ben. So much for the controls. I could have used those. Nothing. What the? Ben, what did you do? Are you alive? I am, but I don't know about Rip Burger. I can see him. He's out cold. Climb back here quick. to over there. Nothing to hold on to over there. Nothing to hold on to over there. Wait, come back! We need your weight in the plane! inspiration to us all. He gave us freedom. He gave us power. He gave us wings. He gave us wheels. Thank you, Malcolm Corley, for giving us a dream that will never die.
So. So. Uh, maybe we could do lunch sometime next week. Yeah, sure. Lunch sounds great. Things aren't gonna change, are they, Ben? I mean, just because I'm in charge of the company now, and living in a mansion, and riding around in limos, that doesn't mean we won't spend a lot of time together, does it? Look, Mo, you're in a different league now. You shouldn't be hanging out with the likes of me anymore. But Ben... Oh, just a second. Hello? What? No, 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 that's crazy. Is he nuts? Look, move the meeting up to five and tell the plant foreman that I'm coming over personally to inspect those parts. I know, I know, that's what I told him. <sighs> Excuse me, what was that last part? No, 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 that alloy was flawed to begin with. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 good, great.
population is greatly decreased And now the odds are greatly increased That I may someday get a chance To kiss your lips I thank the Lord each day For the apocalypse Thank you. 